What is going on guys, DBG here and in this video I'm going to be doing basically a guide to start your NBA 2K19 My Team. So I'm actually going to be releasing this really early because in general the same principles happen every single year with my team and I'm kind of predicting what's going to happen because a lot of the time if you say if you make this video after a day or two any of the tips given are basically useless because um, the market says already crashed or it's risen in certain areas and I'm going to be doing a lot of predictions um, on I think how I think the market's going to go, what I think the best way to start your my team is going to be because we do have a lot of information on how the game mode is going to start anyway as in like what uh, tier cards are going to be the highest, um, what um, amount of VC most people are getting, the amount of MT people are getting because there is suddenly people getting MT now uh, for pre-ordering a $100 edition of the game and how I think that's going to affect the market. If I'm wrong with any of this, I am sorry. And also, I'm going to be releasing this today really, really early um, rather than releasing it later because um, if you guys don't know, um, I am currently, well, I'm recording this when I'm in Ireland, but um, by the time I upload this, I will be in New York um, at the 2K19 uh, community, well, there for the 2K19 community event. So, um, Basically, I won't actually be back in my house to record videos until, well, a week from today, but um, next Monday, Monday the 3rd of September, I think, is the last day. I say it's the next time I'm at home, and um, because of that, I'm going to release this as early as possible so that you guys, you have more time to kind of prepare, You have a lot more people have time to see this video. So um, now let's get on to uh, basically the guide. So when it comes to players, I've got an entire video on the type of players you should look to pick up day one. I will leave a link to that in the description. And um, I'm also just going to um, talk a little bit about that now. So um, what I always would advise is to uh, make sure you're getting cheap players, especially at the very, very start. And um, the players basically at the point guard position, if you can get a tall shooter who can drive to the basket even slightly, they'll be able to drive to the basket just because they're tall because that's the way 2k works but a tall shooter a point guard that is actually a point guard is always helpful you can hide uh someone at the shooting guard position as long as they can shoot so you just literally just need a shooter um at the small four positions get a three and d guy get an auto porter type player at the four you can either go with a small ball four or a shot blocking shooting four and at the five um a shot blocking shooter who also has a high enough standing dunk rating that's kind of important and um, the reason why I'm saying with shooting is that um, really for spacing the floor, uh, you're really going to need uh, shooters. A lot of people are saying, oh, they'd rather use like a center like Shaq. I'm like, fair enough. Like if you're getting a really good center that can't shoot in the game, they're going to cost a lot more. They're going to be rated really high. But you can get away with using gold and silver cards if they can shoot and they can literally just spread the floor. You can get away with using lower rated cards if they can all spread the floor and you've got one guy who can attack the basket. You can get away with using lower rated cards. But anyway, that's basically the gist of what's uh, in the video I made yesterday. So I will leave a link to that in the description anyway. But now let's go on to the actual tips. So my first tip is try complete the Supermax or sorry, My Team Unlimited. Try complete that within the first week. Um, I don't know, actually, to be fair, this is more, more, more so a tip for Europeans. Make sure you have the first month, September, completed before FIFA comes out. Because if you guys don't know Europeans, um, it's actually 2K is really popular until FIFA comes out and then everyone goes and jumps on FIFA. So you're going to be playing a lot of weaker competition until FIFA comes out. And once FIFA comes out, the only people you play in Europe are the basketball fanatics. So you play against good players every single time. So winning 12 in a row is going to be almost impossible. So try get that as soon as possible um, once FIFA comes out or before FIFA comes out anyway for Europeans. For Americans, I'd still advise to do it relatively early because the longer you wait, the better teams people are going to have and the harder it's going to be. But early in the game, I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference. But for Europeans, get it done as quickly as possible. I also would suggest to um, complete super, sorry, not Supermax, complete domination as soon as possible. Because basically, all cards lose their value as time goes on. Except for the really high rated cards, when people get more MT, um, the highest possible rated cards go up in value, actually, the more MT people have. But in general, the cards will go down because there's going to be more and more of them on the market. 
and um, there's going to be only a select few that will go up and that'll be the elite cards like the Amethyst Giannis. If there is an Amethyst Giannis, it'll be like the Amethyst Anthony Davis, the Amethyst LeBron, any of the high rated Amethyst cards or if they do have any diamonds early in the game, those are the cards that are probably going to go up in um, value if they are quite rare just because they're the best cards in the game for the time being anyway. So um, what, would I, what I'd suggest is complete domination straight away and just sell every card back straight away. No matter what, because domination, you're not going to be getting an Amethyst card. You're probably not even going to be getting a Ruby. So just sell those cards back right away in domination, and you could end up getting a lot of MT. And if you can complete it quick enough, because of the historic, or actually, no, there's no longer historic domination. I don't know what they're going to do with the packs for the fancy domination. But um, yeah, so basically, just complete domination as quickly as possible and just sell the cards as quickly as possible. Also, what I would suggest is to um, have a look at the collections. Assuming they're going to be doing collection rewards for like as in for completing all the current NBA collections like they have been doing in previous years and um, this is again this is all assuming that they have them um, if not I will if they don't and I find out they don't I will just put it in the pinned comment so if you don't see it in the pinned comment and it's this video has been out more in a day then you can assume they are in the game so um, basically what I would suggest to do is to look for the collections where there's a really good reward and then to snipe as many silver and bronze players you can get from those really good rewards like last year it was the denver nuggets from a tumbo it was the clippers for dominique wilkins and the spurs for duncan those silver and bronze cards went for three and four k and if you happen to pack any of them in your starter pack like silvers and bronzes from those teams sell them right away because even though they are worth a bit they're probably not great to use in game so try keep your squad as cheap as possible while um being usable especially early in the game like you don't need a god squad the gap between a god squad and a 30 or and a 15k squad at the start of the game is almost minimal as the game goes on it becomes a bigger and bigger gap but at the start of the game it is almost minimal so what i would again advise is to keep your squad as cheap as possible while still being usable and still being good enough that you feel you can win most games you can play other tips I give is if you do open packs, if you do use that 100,000 um, VC to open packs, a lot of people say wait for a promo pack, wait for a promo pack. Don't do that. Do not do that. What I would suggest is, is that open them packs straight away and then sell them cards straight away. Because you gotta look about you gotta look at it this way. So by the time the first promo pack comes out, or maybe even do it in historic pack straight away, because there is historic pack straight away. But by the time the promo packs start to come out, or the really good packs start to come out, everyone's going to be pulling them. So all that means is that there's more of all the lower rated cards on the market, there's more of every card on the market, the market's a lot more saturated with players, which means the price of every single card goes down. And this is just going to keep happening throughout the year, so the price of cards are going to go down and down and down. Day one is the time when the silvers and the golds and the bronzes are at their most expensive. Unless, of course, they're in a really, really good collection, then wait a couple of days. But like in general, there, it's the day when all bronzes will sell for 700, 800 coins, regardless of how bad their collection is. It's the day when silver sell for a little bit. It's the day when you'll get a little bit for golds. You get maybe 1,500 for golds. And especially because um, the 50k MT. The 50k MT is actually going to be huge for things like that because there are going to be people looking to buy to complete those collections day one. Right. Whereas last year it took a couple of days for the market to stabilize, um, because no one really had MT and those cards stayed cheap. Because people all have that 50k MT, none of the cards are going to be really, really cheap this year. Every card's going to sell, and I don't know how long that will be for. So um, if you are going to open packs at the 100k VC, do it straight away because you're almost guaranteed with the fact that everyone has 50k MT that you'll be able to sell all those cards. And the last tip that I'm going to give you guys, because of the 50k MT, obviously cards are going to be way overpriced. I think that those amethysts are going to be the guts of 100k after a couple of days, the top rated amethyst. But what I would suggest is sit on your MT for quite a bit. So just sit on it. As in... Do not spend that MT. As tempted as you are to buy a Ruby in October, don't. Honestly, don't. Just sit on the MT. You can use it to snipe, you can use it to make more MT, but um, honestly, do not spend all your MT on one player. There is really no advantage to doing that. The difference between a really good 83 overall card and an 87 overall card is so small. 
but yet in price uh, just with the way 2k logic is like 83 and 87 there's not much of a difference and a lot of times the 80 so there's some 83 guys that are better than rubies but the fact is that early in the game especially you'll see people paying 100k for rubies and i'm guilty of that myself i'm guilty of doing that for content but i was never one of those people that would spend all their empty early in the game uh, like a lot of people but um yeah so sit on your empty as much as possible obviously you're still going to want to have fun so um like if you do want to splash a bit of empty go for it but what i'd never suggest is to spend especially on moments cards things like that to straight away go out and buy them because that is just the biggest waste of empty maybe after a couple of days and the price dies down on some moments cards but straight away like if you buy a card as soon as they come out in packs um, and it's one of the higher rated cards in packs you are going to get completely completely ripped off so um a lot of the time sitting on your MT is honestly one of the best decisions you can make when it comes to my team um and to be honest going for budget options rather than expensive options especially early in the game later in the game the expensive cards are clearly clearly the best in the game but early in the game you can easily get budget cards and compete with these god squad type cards early in the game and you don't need to break the bank or spend real money or major MT on those cards. So anyway, that's the video. This is just kind of a small guide to starting NBA 2K19 Mighty. Obviously, it's going to be different for everyone. Everyone has a different tactic, but this is the general tactic that I'm going to be using. And it's a tactic that I think will work well. It's a tactic that I think will um, mean that you've got a great chance of um, having a team that can compete in my team ultimate or unlimited, whatever it's called, I keep calling it ultimate, um, just have ultimate in my head, but um, have a team that can compete in that while spending minimal, if not, if anything on the game. Um, obviously I'm buying the $100 edition, you don't even need the $100 edition to go out with this tactic. And also um, putting yourself in a position to be um, somewhat successful when it comes to uh, having MT and being able to get some good players and keeping up that same kind of strategy throughout the year. Having a team that's good enough to compete at all stages while also not completely breaking the bank. So um, in my opinion, this is just the best way to start out my team and it's the way I'm gonna be doing it and hopefully, hopefully it works out. If anything I say in this video is wrong, I will leave it in the pinned comment and if my team ends up being a completely different game mode than what we expect it to be and all of this is wrong, I will take down the video and apologize, don't worry. So yeah, this is just my guide for starting NBA 2K19 my team. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.